I want to welcome everyone here today. Today's hearing is on unmanned aerial vehicles, applications, and public policy implications. And unspoken uh, very clearly in, in, in that title is the rights and responsibilities of individuals and the people who, who are underneath those aerial vehicles. Today we will discuss commercial applications for unmanned aerial vehicles, otherwise known as UAVs or drones, and the potential public policy implications. It is my hope that this and future hearings on new technologies will educate members so they have a more informed understanding of the policy decisions before us. There is significant potential for UAV markets. Some of that potential has already been realized on the battlefield of Iraq and Afghanistan and in providing safe observation of hurricanes and other activities around the world. But today, drones as, oops, drones as small and simple as this few hundred dollar one, up to drones costing $18,000 and more, are commercially available. These drones are often used in novel ways never possible before. This includes and is not limited to one of our testimony today, which will talk about the significance of uh, unmanned aerial vehicle for real estate. The ability to know and see the property you may buy while you are in fact thousands of miles away has been a dream for a long time. And until inexpensive unmanned aerial vehicles became available with high performance cameras, it was impossible to demonstrate from the air how you would get there, what it looked like, the condition of it, or even what the backyard properly looked like in a way in which the potential buyer could appreciate it well before coming to see the property. Companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon are investing in developing new drone technologies that have the potential to change how we receive internet service, various goods, and even how we monitor and access remote places around the world or disaster areas. Responsible drone, u drone use across industries, including internet services, movie and news industries, sports coverage, and more are part of daily operations. As drone technology has become rapidly more prevalent over the past few years, both the government and private sector have, fa have, have been faced with challenging questions over privacy, airspace access, and more. Such a debate broadly echoes the theme that this committee sees in new technology. How do we allow new innovative technologies to come to market and advance economic interests without stifling private industry through, through <coughs> excuse me, without stifling private industries through outdated or inflexible regulations? UAV technology has the potential to deliver genuine services to society and at the same time the public and private sectors must work together to protect co consumers safety and privacy such a cooperation should focus on flexibility and i am interested to hear from our witnesses suggestions on how we can balance the needs of consumers and technology developers before i conclude and yield to the ranking member i want to say on a very personal basis that I have seen these vehicles operate. I've had the opportunity to operate some of the small vehicles. I've seen them operate uh, as long ago as the beginning of the Gulf War uh, in 2001. These and their consumer smaller versions represent a great opportunity. One that more than a decade, or not more than a decade, six years ago, Ray LaHood, then the brand new Secretary of Transportation, said was his priority, one of his priorities to accomplish during his tenure. He pledged to work on the FAA to develop standards for safety and deployability, not just for these smaller ones like the one I held up earlier, but in fact for the Global Hawk, the Predator, and other large-scale uh, UAVs. He is a dear friend of mine, but the FAA let us down, and today as a private pilot, I find it <coughs> reprehensible that we are in fact constantly talking about the danger of very small ones. Well, the FAA has essentially punted on their responsibility to set standards. 
so it is not the f a a is not within the this committee's jurisdiction and we appreciate that but at the same time we understand that the possibilities for these vehicles flying typically below four hundred feet cannot be stifled by the in just the inaction of the f a a and so with that i look forward to my ranking member statement and our witnesses and i yield to the gentleman from new york